6.2, Law of Signs. All right, so we spent a lot of time talking about right triangles. A lot of time talking about right triangles. And we love right triangles. However, it is time for us to talk about non-right triangles. With non-right triangles, you can no longer use the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem will not work unless you have a right triangle. So we need new laws. We need new rules to use. The, there are two we're going to talk about. One is law of sines and the other is law of cosines. Law of cosines is the next section um, and they're to be used in different scenarios. So for law of sines, we use this to solve non-right non -right triangles and it can be used when you have the following. So you need to have the measure of an angle and the side length of the side opposite to it and then an additional piece of information, which could be a side length or an angle. It could be any additional piece of information. So if I'm looking at these triangles here, let's say I know baby C, angle B, angle A. If we know angle A and we know angle B, then we also know angle C because we can just do 180 minus the other two angles. So in this situation here, you do have the information about an angle and the side opposite it, because you can find angle C. And then you have two additional pieces of information here, right? You have another angle. So like not only do you have one additional piece, you have two additional pieces here. We call this angle side angle, which gets abbreviated ASA. So that's one situation where law of signs can be used. Another situation where law of signs can be used, so by the way, the, the red highlighting here means what you're given. So when I highlight it in red, I'm saying that that's what you know, that's what you're, you, you were given is probably the we're given. All right. Um, another thing that could happen, uh, so you definitely, you need to know the side opposite to an angle. So when I say measure of an angle and the side length opposite to it, I mean angle C opposite to it is baby C. So you know everything about the letter C. Um, you could know letter A and baby A, and then you would know an angle and the side length opposite to it. Same thing with big B, baby B. Um, this is the side opposite to this angle. So you need to know at least one pair of letters, both of the values. So if I know a side length and I know angle C, and then I know an additional angle down here, this works because I have this information here and one additional piece of information by knowing angle A. We call this side angle angle because there's a side and angle angle. Angle side angle because angle side angle. So side angle angle. Okay. Finally, we could know everything about angle C and side length C, and we could know an additional side length. So we know all this information, and then we have one additional piece of information by knowing what the side length of uh, side B is. People like to joke about this one. We're not going to call it angle side side. We call it side side angle for obvious reasons. But go ahead and laugh about angle side side right now. If that if. If it makes you feel better, you can go ahead and do that at this time. Go ahead and give it a pause, give yourself a giggle, and then we will continue. All right, so what is the law of signs? 
it's actually a fairly easy formula. There's two versions of the formula. So the first one is sine of angle A over A is equal to sine of angle B over baby B, which is equal to sine of angle C over baby C. Um, this same formula can be written with the fractions flipped upside down. There's actually a bunch of ways you could write this formula, but these are the two main ways that get used. And then you just kind of rewrite it as needed. So you're not actually using three pieces at once. When you're doing these, these problems, you're only ever using two pieces at once. So you might use sine A over A equals sine B over B. Or you might use sine A over A equals sine C over C. You're only using two pieces at a time. You're not actually using all three. Um, and I want to be very clear here. So the letters match up to their opposite angle slash side. So angle A and baby A are opposite one another. Angle B and baby B are opposite one another. Angle C and baby C are opposite one another. You need to know everything about one letter in order to use law of signs. So you write that down to use, and then I'm gonna write LOS for law of signs. You must know everything about one letter. So for instance, um, if you know angle A, baby A, and angle B, this would be fine because you know everything about A. Right. If you have side length C, side length baby B, and then angle B, this would be fine to use law of signs because you know everything about B. Um, I only mention this because, kind of going back here, I don't ever use this. Some students really connect with angle, side, angle, side, angle, angle, side, side, angle. Um, I don't think about this at all. I only think about, do I have all the information about one letter? That's when I know I can use law of signs. So, throwing that out there. So, let's go ahead and do an example. All right, so we have a non-right triangle here, and we are asked to solve it. We are given angle B, angle A, and then the side length opposite, angle A. So remember our naming system, uh, whatever angle it's opposite, you use the lowercase letter for that side length, so this is A. This side over here would be baby B. I like to say baby instead of lowercase because it's less syllables. Yeah, it's less syllables. And I like the way it feels on my lips when I say baby. So take it as you will. I know that C's all look the same, but whatever. So baby C over there because it's opposite angle C. We are good to use law of signs here because we have everything we need to know about angle A or about A in general. So we have everything about A, which means we can use law of signs. So the things that we're missing, we are missing angle C. I'm going to put a space for everything here. We're missing angle C, we're missing side length B, and we are missing side length C. Those are the three things we need to find. I find that it's often easiest to start with the, um, if you have two angles, start with finding the other angle. That's typically the easiest thing to find. So I'm going to start there. Finding angle C is not going to be a big deal. We have two angles in this triangle already. So angle C is just going to be 180 degrees minus the other two angles. So 40 degrees and 60 degrees, which is going to leave you with 80 degrees. So angle C is 80 degrees. Perfect. We didn't even have to use law of signs for that one. Let's uh, look at the side lengths. For the side lengths, we are going to have to use law of signs. 
I'm going to go ahead and find side length B first. you're going to need to set this up correctly. So we have these formulas here. You know whether to choose this guy or this guy based on whether you're trying to solve for an angle or you're trying to solve for a side length. In general, you want the thing, so you're gonna have something of the form fraction equals a fraction, right? That's just how the law of sines looks. You want whatever you're looking for to be in this box here. That's the box you want what we're looking for. So if I'm looking for side length B, I'm putting B up top, right? which means sine B would be down below, sine of angle B. To know what to choose on this side over here, you're using whichever letter you know everything about. So in this case, we know everything about A, so we're gonna use A and sine A. And then I'm going to make a note over here. What we want is on top there. So I don't know what B is, what baby B is. I know that uh, angle B is 60 degrees. Side length A is 4. And angle A is 40 degrees. In order to solve for B here, we need to multiply both sides of this equation by sine of 60 degrees because that will cancel those signs out. So you have B equals 4 sine of 60 degrees over sine of 40 degrees. Now, do not try to simplify this right here, do not try to do 60 divided by 40. You just put this in your calculator exactly the way it looks. Okay. Um, I'm gonna round my answers to two decimal places. That's just how I'm, gonna, how I'm gonna do it. Do make sure your calculator is in degree mode. If your calculator is in radian mode, you're gonna get the wrong answers and it's gonna make you very angry. So uh, let me make a note here. Make sure calc is in degree mode. All right, for law of sines and law of cosines, everything we talk about is in degree measurements. So you don't need to worry about radians for these. Okay. So if you plug this into your calculator, you should get 5.39. So side length B is equal to 5.39. And last but not least, we're going to find side length C. Now, do remember that we are not looking at a right triangle. We cannot use the Pythagorean theorem here. That is not something that we can use. Um, so I might need to actually, let me select all this and make it smaller. The great thing about using a, an iPad. All right, I'll make that smaller just so I can write the next part. So we have to use law of signs again for this, for finding side length C. So we are looking for side length C, so we'll put that up top, and then sine C equals, and we're gonna use A again because we were originally given everything about A. It makes it easier. I don't really wanna use this number here because this is a rounded number. Using rounded numbers can give you problems. So I'm just not going to do that. So I have C over sine of, angle C is 80 degrees. That's right here. Um, side length A is four. 
and angle A is 40 degrees. We'll be doing the same math here to solve for C. So I'll be multiplying both sides by sine of 80 degrees. I get C is equal to 4 sine of 80 degrees over sine of 40 degrees. You will plug that in your calculator and it should spit out 6.13. And there you go. That is the fully solved triangle using law of sines. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. Um, what I'm going to do over here, I'm just going to write down a space for all of the parts of the triangle, even the parts we have. And we will fill in the parts we have and go from there. So we know angle A is 35 degrees. We know angle B is 15 degrees. Um, labeling the side lengths here. So this is op the five is opposite from angle C. So this is side length C. So this is five. Um, this is opposite from angle A. So it will be side length A. This is opposite from si um, angle B. So it'll be side length baby B. And this this helps a little bit when you look at it in this view, because we need to know everything about one of these letters in order to continue. We don't know everything about any of the letters to begin with. However, we can find angle C very easily. And once we have angle C, we will know everything about the letter C. So we're going to start by finding angle C. So angle C is going to be 180 degrees minus the other two angles. So 15 degrees and 35 degrees, which is going to give us 130 degrees. Perfect. So we now know everything about C. I'm going to go ahead and start finding, let's do side length A. So if A is what I want, side length A is what I want, then I'm putting A up there, which means sine of angle A will be down here. And I know everything about C. So side length C goes up there. Sine of angle C will go down here. So don't know what A is. Angle A is 35 degrees. Side length C is 5. Angle C is 130. We've done this math a few times now. To get A by itself, we will multiply by sine of 35 degrees. So those sine 35 degrees cancel. You get A is equal to 5 sine of 35 degrees over sine of 130 degrees. Which, if you plug that into your calculator, should be approximately 3.74. So we have side length A now. And finally, sorry, I'm choosing a color. Um, I don't like that color either. I'll do purple. It's not a very happy purple. You know, let's just make this. Today's actually Easter. Um, you're not watching. Well, I guess it's not really Easter anymore because it's like three in the morning, um, which is probably more than you need to know. But I'm going to find a nice Easter color here. There we go. Nice Easter purple. Three, we're going to find the other missing side length, which is side B. So put B up here, 
sine of angle B, and then we're still using C because that's the one we know everything about. Angle B is 15 degrees, side length C is 5, angle C is 130 degrees. Multiply both sides by sine of 15 degrees to get the denominator to cancel. So B is equal to 5 sine of, a, of 15 degrees over sine of 130 degrees. Plug that into your calculator, and it should spit out 1.69. And that's that. We've solved the entire triangle. We have all the angles, and we have all the side lengths. So it's really not that bad. There is something we're about to talk about that makes it a little bit worse, but it's not that bad. Law of Sines isn't terrible. All right, so here's the thing about Law of Sines that makes it a little bit weird. The side-side angle case. If you have only one angle to begin with, so the two cases we had back here, they each had two angles to begin with. Um, but if you look at page one, um, Where's my pointer? There it is. There is a potential case where we only begin with one angle and we have two side lengths. If you only begin with one angle, you are in the side side angle situation and there are three things that could happen. You may end up with one solution, you may end up with two solutions, or there might not be a solution at all. So uh, let's talk about it. So let's start with what's the, mo the most interesting one is the two solution one, right? You might think to yourself, how in the world could there be two solutions to one triangle? Um, and hopefully this picture helps. I found it online. So the two solutions side side angle is known as the ambiguous case because there are two possible triangles that make it work. So in a side side angle situation, we know this side here, okay, so we know baby B, that is told to us. We also know side length A, right? Those are the two sides we know. And we know angle A. So we know that this line right here, that we know that side length C, right, this whole thing right here is side length C. We know that it has to come out at this, at this degree, at this angle, because this angle is fixed right here. This side length is fixed. But this side right here can swing however it needs to. Notice that when it swings, this is the path it would make if it swings, it hits here and it also hits here, right? This side is fixed. This, this side is fixed. I mean, so this, this side's fixed, can't be moved. This side here is fixed but can swing because this angle is not fixed. And this angle over here is not fixed either. So there are two possible triangles that will fulfill the need for these two side lengths to exist and this angle to exist as shown. So now the real big question, let me erase some of this. The real big question is, okay, well, how do we find that other, you know, like the other uh, angle, right? So like there's this angle B and there's this angle B and how do we find those two possible angles? Well, let me zoom in on this triangle right here, right? Keep on imagining this triangle here. Um, maybe I'll just kind of extend this over again. I know I just erased it. So this is A, this is A, right? That's this picture right in there. These are the same side length and you can imagine a triangle that would be made, right? 
right here. Um, this would be an isosceles triangle because two side lengths are the same. Let me grab my black pen back. Iso <laughs> isosceles. So with an isosceles triangle, two side lengths are equal, but what's more important is that their base angles are equal. which means that this angle right here, which I will call theta, and this angle over here, which I can also call theta because they are the same angle, they're the same angle because it's an isosceles triangle, right? So what we're trying to figure out right now is what this angle right here would be and what this angle right here would be. Now, Based on my picture over here, this would be theta, right? This angle here is the angle right here. It forms a straight angle with theta. So this angle on the other side is 180 degrees minus theta because the two of them together make an 180 degree angle. So this guy over here is 180 degrees minus theta. So the moral of the story, let me just copy and paste this. The moral of the story is when you're using law of sines to solve a triangle, if there are two unknown angles, once you find the first angle, you need to start a second triangle that has the angle 180 degrees minus theta. It might turn out that the other triangle doesn't work. However, you still have to try it out. So let's go ahead and do an example of a triangle where we're only given one angle to begin with and we will go through the whole process. All right, so let's look at this problem. We are given one angle and two side lengths. So we are looking at um, a, a case where there could potentially be multiple triangles involved. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do um, I'm going to write triangle one right here, and I'm going to use subscripts to denote the fact that there was going to potentially be two triangles. So angle A1, side A1, angle B1, side B1, angle C1, side C1. Some of these, of course, have already been given to us. So looking up at our triangle, this guy right here, this is A. This would be side length baby B. This guy over here is opposite angle C, so that would be side length C. So we already do know some of these. Um, A1 would be two, baby C1 would be one, and we're given angle C, which is 25 degrees. So this will be the same for triangle one and triangle two. It'll be consistent. So in looking at which of these we can start with, um, we can't start with finding B because we don't have enough information about uh, the side length or the angle. We don't have any information on B at all. And in order for us to, to do law of signs, we need to have information about at least the angle or the side length. So we can deal with A. We can try to find angle A right now. That's something we can do. And we have all the information for angle C, which is what we needed. So step one, we're gonna find angle A1. So we are looking for A1, the angle. So I'm gonna put sine on top this time because that's what I'm solving for over baby A1 equals, and we're using C on the other side here because we have all the information about C. We have all of the information. So we have sine of A1 over side length A1 is two equals a sine of C1, so that's sine of 25 degrees over C1, which is one. Now we're solving for 
a1, so I'm going to start the same way that we've started before, multiplying by that denominator to cancel it out. And if you look right here, sine of 25 degrees over 1, anything over 1 is just itself. So this is just sine 25 degrees. So we have sine of a1 is equal to 2 sine of 25 degrees. Now to undo the sine, we need to use inverse sine. So we're going to take sine inverse on both sides. Now the sine inverse over here on the left hand side is going to cancel, but it is not going to cancel over here. This little two in front here is going to ruin that whole plan. So that won't cancel. So we have angle A1 is equal to sine inverse of 2 sine of 25 degrees. So you plug that into your calculator and you get 57.70 degrees for A1. We're going to underline this number because we are going to come back to that. We need to have, we need to look at that number for our second triangle. But for the time being, I'm just going to finish up this triangle. So looking at the stuff we have left, we have angle B1 and side length B1. We can't deal with both of these missing and use the law of sines at the same time, but angle B1 we can find by knowing that there are 180 degrees in a triangle. So two, we're going to find angle B1 by doing 180 degrees minus the other two angles. So minus 57.70 degrees minus 25 degrees. And that's going to leave us with 97.30 degrees. So at this point, all that's left is side length B1, which we can use law of signs to figure out. So let's go ahead and find side length B1. And I think I'm going to actually Take this, move this up here, because I'm not going to have enough room. So we're looking for B1, so we'll put that on top. So B1, oops, there's my dog, hold on just a second. Sorry about that. Angry dog. Um, so we have uh, side length B1 over sine of angle B1. And then we know everything about C, so we're going to use C again. So C1 over sine of C1. Angle B1 was 97.30 degrees, and side length C1 is 1, angle C1 is 25 degrees. Solving for side length B1, once again, multiplying both sides by the denominator to cancel it out. We get B1 is equal to sine of 97.30 degrees all over sine of 25 degrees. So you're going to plug that in your calculator and it should spit out 2.35. So this is our first triangle. We are not done though. We have checked the first triangle, but we need to find the second triangle. So I am going to kind of copy this information onto the next slide. I'm gonna pause it real quick and do that and then we'll pick it back up. All right, so here we go. Um, I've copied the important information here onto another slide. And this time we are looking at triangle two. <clears throat> So we have angle A2, side length A2, angle B2, side length B2, and angle C2, and side length C2. Some of these we already know. So we know that the angle C is 25 degrees. We know that side length A is 2, and we know that side length C is 1. So... 
A1, angle A1 was 57.70 degrees. To find angle A2, you do 180 degrees minus 57.70 degrees. And to remind you, this right here was the first angle we found. So the first angle we found is the one that we're using to find our potential second triangle. So we don't know that there's going to be a second triangle yet. We're going to have to try it out. So this is going to give you 122.30 degrees as our potential second triangle, the A2 angle. So I guess our first step was really find A2. Our second step will be finding angle B2 which we're able to do with just doing 180 degrees minus the other two angles. So if you do this and you end up getting a negative angle, then you're going to know that there's not a second triangle. So as long as I do this and I get a positive angle out, that means there is a second triangle. So you plug in 180 minus 122.30 minus 25 on your calculator, and you're going to get 32.70 degrees. So that's a positive number, which means the second triangle does exist. So 32.70 degrees for angle B2. And then we'll find side length B2. We'll put him up top. And then sine of B2 is equal to C2 over sine of C2. So B2 over sine of 32.70 degrees is equal to 1 over sine of 25 degrees. And it's the same story, right? Uh, multiply by sine of 32.70 degrees on both sides. These guys cancel. And now we have B2 is equal to sine of 32.70 degrees over sine of 25 degrees. You plug that in your calculator and you should get that B2 is approximately 1.28. And that's that. There's your second triangle. So to really quickly recap on all of that, we knew that we needed to check for a second triangle because we be were doing law of sines and we only began with one angle. If you begin with two angles, you don't need to do this at all. But if you begin with one angle, you do have to check. So we found angle A1. Um, so the things that we ended up finding, we found angle A1, we found angle B1, and we found side length B1. So the red underlined things we didn't have when we began this process. We started with finding angle A1 because we couldn't do anything about B. We didn't have, we needed at least one inf piece of information about B in order to use, to find anything about B, so we had to wait on that. So we found angle A1 first. Once we found angle A1, we did finish the rest of finding this triangle, but then we went back, took that original angle that we found, and we did 180 minus that angle. And that gives you your second potential angle for A. If you're able to find a positive angle for, this, for the last angle, for the third angle, then you do have a second triangle. And so we continued onward and we finished up our triangle. So this is the ambiguous case of law of sines. So that was the most complicated case of side sine angle. That's the ambiguous case where you end up with two different triangles. However, there's also the no solution side side angle. And what happens in the no solution side side angle um, is that essentially, once again, this angle right here is fixed. So this side length can be however long it wants or short as it wants, but this angle right here is fixed. This side right here is fixed, so that can't change. And this side right here is fixed. 
And this can swing back and forth, but if it's not long enough to ever meet with this side down here, then you're not ever going to create a triangle. So visually, this is what a no solution looks like. Let's go ahead and do an example, which, spoiler alert, is going to turn out to have no solution. Um, but let, let's look at an example. All right, so here we have a triangle, and we are going to try to solve it. We are starting with one angle, so we could potentially have two triangles going on. Um, let's write down what we have. So we're going to pretend that there's potentially two triangles. And we will write down all the different pieces of information. So looking at our little picture here, uh, this guy right here would be C, side length C, because it's across the triangle from angle C. This is A because it's across the triangle from angle A. And this side over here would be B. So we have angle C1 that was 50 degrees. We have side length C1, that's one. And we have side length A1, which is two. Now, if we compare this to this previous problem, this is a very, very similar setup with a different angle for angle C. So we're going to begin by solving for A1 because we have half the information about A, and so that's where we should start. So I'm doing sine of A1 over side length A1 is equal to, we're going to use C as reference because we have all the information about C. So we have sine A1 over 2 is equal to sine of 50 degrees over 1. Same story we've done this entire time. Multiply both sides by 2. So you have sine of angle A1 is equal to 2 sine of 50 degrees. To get rid of sine so that we can get the angle by itself, we'll take inverse sine on both sides. And you get angle A1 is equal to sine inverse of 2 sine 50 degrees, which all looks fine so far. However, if you pull out your calculator, and you put this in. And I encourage you, viewer at home, to do this. You're going to get a math error. So if you remember, syntax error is you, you did something wrong. You just entered it wrong. Math error means it just it's not mathematically feasible. It just does not mathematically happen. So if you get a math error when you're trying to solve for an angle, it means the triangle is impossible and it has no solution. So let me write that down real quick. So we can say here, because we got this math error, that there's just no solution to this triangle. So even though over here it looks like it's a triangle, that's just because I can sketch whatever I want and put whatever labels I want on it, it's not actually a triangle that could be completed. So let's look back to what our, what our possible side-side angle cases were. Um, we've talked about the two solution case, we've talked about the no solution case, but there's also the one solution case which I've kind of alluded to, but let's go ahead and do an example. So quickly, before we do an example, let's just talk about what's happening here. 
So we, we talked about the two solution case where we have this fixed side length over here and it can swing and maybe it hits here twice. We talked about the case where this side here, it swings, but it doesn't hit at all. In the one solution case, it's going to be just long enough to hit right here to hit once and then it just kind of swings away. So it never hits again, it just kind of hits there once. That's what the one solution side side angle triangle has going on. So it only hits once and that's why there's only one triangle. So now to an example. All right, so here we go. We have a triangle. We are given only one angle. So we are looking at potentially two triangles here. So we'll start by talking about triangle one. So I will have angle A1, side length A1, angle B1, side length B1, angle C1, and side length C1. Looking at our picture up here, this guy right here, that's going to be side length B because it's opposite angle B. This would be side length A, and this side over here would be side length C. So kind of filling in the things we have, we know this guy is 2, this one is 3, and this is 40 degrees. So we know everything about A, and we know half the things about B, so we're going to start with B, finding angle B. So we have a sine of B1 over side length B1 is equal to, we know everything about A, so that's what we're going to use on the other side here. So we have sine of A1 over A1. So sine of angle B1 over side length B1 is 2. And sine of 40 degrees over 3 to get angle B1 by itself, we're going to start by multiplying both sides by 2. So you have sine of angle B1 is equal to 2 sine of 40 degrees over 3. To undo that sine and get the angle by itself, we are going to take sine inverse on both sides. Over on the left-hand side, it cancels. So we get that angle B1 is equal to sine inverse of 2 sine 40 degrees over 3. So you're going to plug that in your calculator real quick, and you should get 25.37 degrees for angle B1. So I'm going to underline this because we are going to come back to that number. But for now, um, we are left finding everything about C, and the easiest thing and the only thing we can find right now is angle C1. So we'll start there. So we'll do 180 degrees minus the other two angles. So minus 40 degrees, minus 25.37 degrees, and we get 114.63 degrees for angle C. Finally, we have a side length C1. So we'll have C1 over sine of C1 is equal to side length A1 over sine of angle A1. C1 over sine of 114.63 degrees is equal to 40 degrees over sine Oh, not <laughs> side length A1 is 3. So 3 over sine of 40 degrees. Multiplying both sides by sine of 114.63 degrees to cancel out that denominator. Leaves us with C1 equals 3 sine of 114.63 degrees all over sine of 40 degrees. Plugging that one in your calculator, 
you're going to get approximately 4.24. And that's our first triangle. So now we need to check for a second triangle. So normally I would do this on a new slide, but let me just kind of squeeze this all in here. So for triangle two, we would take this first angle that we found and instead of it being angle B1, we would say that this would be angle B2, right? Because the things we need to find would be angle B1, angle C1, and side length C1. Those are the things that are up in the air. Um, we would take the original B1 angle and we would do 180 degrees minus 25.37 degrees. And this is going to give you 154.63 degrees. So if I'm lazy and just kind of, oops, <laughs> I just kind of erase some of this out of here, change some ones into twos because I'm lazy. <laughs> Angle B2 would be 154.63 degrees. The next thing we would find would be angle C2. And to find angle C2, we would be subtracting these other two angles out of 180 degrees. So we would have 180 degrees minus angle B1 or B2, which is 154.63 degrees, and then minus angle A2, which is 40 degrees. But when you do this, you're going to get negative 14.63 degrees. You can't have a negative angle. So this, the, there is no second triangle. So if you do this and you're solving for that third angle and you get a negative angle, that means there's not a second triangle. And the only answer is the one I had before I erased this one, uh, erased it and put new stuff in there. So um, the answers, see, there's angle C1, here's angle B1, side length C1. That's the only triangle there is, just that triangle there. Um, and that's what there is for this section. So most of the situation, so... In a situation where you're given two angles to start with, don't worry about the second triangle. Not going to happen. If you're doing law of sines and you start with only one angle, always check for that second triangle. And then if you get a math error when you're solving for an angle, that's going to mean there's no solutions. So keeping that all in mind, um, practice, practice, practice. That's what makes that's what makes perfection. So. Please practice and I will see you in the next video. Bye.